Hi everyone. My name is Sri Lakshmi M K, Assistant Professor, Department of CSE, Christ College of Engineering. Today, in this video lecture, I am going to discuss about distributed computing system models. We can start with an introduction. As we all know, distributed computing systems are a collection of computers which are interconnected through a communication network. In order to build such a system, we have five different categories of models. They are mini computer model, workstation model, workstation server model, then processor pool model, and finally hybrid model. We are going to discuss about all these models in the upcoming slides. First model is mini computer model. The basic idea of a mini computer model is centralized time sharing system. As the name suggests, here we are using few mini computers interconnected through a communication network. And it is possible to log into a particular mini computer by multiple users at the same time. For that purpose, we are using several interactive terminals that are connected to each mini computer. Whenever a user logged on to a specific mini computer, he or she can have the remote access to other mini computers. That is another speciality of this particular model. And we will use this particular model when we need resource sharing. Here is the diagrammatical representation of mini computer model. Here we can see that there is a communication network which is connecting all the mini computers together. And for each mini computers, there are several interactive terminals that will help multiple users to interact with that particular mini computer simultaneously. The second model is workstation model. Instead of mini computers, we are using workstations here in this model. Several workstations are interconnected through a communication network and each workstation equipped with its own desk and each of them will serve as a single user computer. It is not possible to log into a single workstation by multiple users. That is the main difference between mini computer model and workstation model. And this kind of model is found in such an environment where a significant proportion of the workstations are idle for a period of time specifically in night. So here we will connect all these workstations together through a high speed LAN so that the ideal workstations may be used to process jobs which need more processing power. And in this model, when a user logged on to one workstation, he can have access from other workstations which is currently idle. And here we can do the jobs processed more efficiently. And in this model, whenever a user logs on to one of the workstations, then it is called his or her home workstation and he or she can submit jobs for execution to another workstation. See, this is the diagrammatical representation of workstation model. Here we can see that there is a communication network which is connecting all the workstations together. And whenever a user logged into a, work, a particular workstation and he can use another workstation if 
that particular workstation is idle. The workstation model is not so simple to implement because there are some issues and we have to resolve those issues first. The first issue is how does the system find an idle workstation? How can we find some workstations are idle and we can use it? That is the first concern. And the second issue is how is the process transferred from one workstation to another? to get it executed. How can we transfer the process from one workstation to workstation to another? That is the second issue. And the third issue, which is the most important issue, which we have to resolve is what happens to a remote process whenever a user logged onto a workstation that is currently idle, but it was being used to execute a process of another workstation. This problem or this issue is depicted in the picture. Just look into the picture. We can see there is a workstation and two different users are there and we can see the time. In the 10th second, a particular user uses that workstation for doing some process and she made some changes in that workstation for her own jobs. After completing all the works of that particular user, the workstation will move into idle state. After 10 more seconds, at the 20th second, another user came. And when he looked into the workstation, that workstation is idle. And he is trying to access that workstation for his own processes. And when he made some changes to the workstation or the data in that particular workstation, what will happen to the result of the first user? What will happen to the processed result of the first user? That is the third concern. So we have to find out the solutions for all these issues. Here we have the solutions. There are three solutions for the issues for workstation model. And the first one is allow the remote process share the resources of the workstation and its own lockdown users processes. Actually, this method is very easy to implement, but it kills the main idea of workstation. What is the main idea of workstation? Workstation is really intended to be a personal computer. But if we implement this approach, then it will kill the, the kill that particular idea of workstation because the lockdown user does not get his or her guaranteed response. If you are allowing the workstation resources and the lockdown users processor everything to the remote process, then it cannot be worked as a personal computer. So that is a limitation for the solution. And the second approach, the second approach is to kill the remote process. But if we kill the remote process, what will happen is all the processing done for the remote process gets deleted and the file system may be left in an inconsistent state. So that reason makes this solution unattractive. And the third solution is migrate the remote process back to its home. And after returning the remote process, it will execute the rest of the things in it's on home workstation. That is the third approach. This is comparatively good, uh, a better solution for the issues that we have mentioned in the previous slide. But there is a difficulty for this solution because if we have to implement this, then the system 
must support preemptive process migration facility. Preemptive process migration facility is nothing but a system should have the capability to suspend the currently running jobs and to execute previously suspended processes. So this is the last and best solution for the previously mentioned issues. But the thing is the system should support preemptive process migration facility. Next is third model that is workstation server model. In this particular model, we are using few mini computers and several workstations interconnected by a communication network. And most of the workstations are diskless, but a few of them are disk full. That is the speciality of the workstations that we are using in workstation server model. When diskless workstations are used in this model, the file system to be used by these workstations must be implemented in two ways. Either by a disk full workstation or by a mini computer. But when we use a mini computer, then it should be equipped with a disk for file storage and it should provide any of the services like file system service or database service or print service, etc. And some specialized machines are used in this model for running server processes. It can be specialized workstations and we'll call it as servers. Actually, we are using these servers for managing and providing access to shared resources. Next is some advantages of workstation server model when compared it to workstation model. So workstation server model is cheaper. That is the first advantage. It is cheaper because we are using few mini computers equipped with large fast disks and data accessed over the network. So we are not using all the workstations for all the purpose or the processes. We are using few mini computers. So it is much cheaper than the workstation model. And the second advantage is easy maintenance of backup and hardware because it is easy when we are using few large disks than with many small disks scattered all over the building. So the second advantage is easy maintenance of backup and hardware. And the third one is flexibility. We are managing the files by file servers. So users can have the flexibility to use any workstation and access the files. So the third advantage is flexibility. And the fourth one is this particular model that is workstation server model doesn't need a process migration. Actually process migration is very difficult to implement and in this model we don't have to do that. And in this model, a client process can send request to a server process. That's it. And finally, the last advantage is guaranteed response time for a user because workstations are not used for executing remote processes. We are using many computers with large fast disks. So a user has guaranteed response time in workstation server model. This is the diagrammatical representation of workstation server model. We can see a communication network which connects some of the workstations and some of the mini computers together. And we can see each and every mini computers are for a specific purpose. One is for file server, file server, one is for database server, one is used as print server. 
each and every mini computer have its own services so this is the diagrammatical representation of workstation server model the fourth one is processor pool model it is used when most of the time a user does not need any computing power but sometimes he or she may be in need of a very large amount of computing power that's maybe for a short time in that situation we can go for this model here in this model the processors are pooled together to be shared by the users as they needed and the pool of processors consists of a large number of mini computers and they are attached to the network and each processor in the pool has its own memory to load and run system program or any application program each and every processors in the pool have no terminals attached directly to them that is another speciality of processor pool model and the main advantage of this particular model is it allows better utilization of the available processing power here is the diagrammatical representation of processor pool model we can see the communication network which connects pool of processors and so many terminals and in the pool of processors we can see that run server is there file server is there and so many server systems are there and they are called as a pool of processors and users are interact to the servers through the terminals finally this is our hybrid model this is nothing but a combination of workstation server model and processor pool model it takes all the advantages of these two models together and here the processors in the pool can be allocated dynamically for computations that are too large or some computations need several computers for the execution in that situation the processors in the pool can be dynamically allocated and in this hybrid model it gives guaranteed response to interactive jobs and it allowing them to be more processed in local workstations of the users itself this is the diagrammatical representation of hybrid model as we can see in the picture several workstations and some mini computers are interconnected through a communication network along with a pool of processors so that we can say that this is the combination of workstation server model and processor pool model so that's about today's topic i hope everything clear for all of you thank you so much